I would like to preface this video by saying that I am in no way trying to undermine the legitimacy of the emotions felt by the students at Stoneman Douglas High School. I can't imagine how difficult it would be to experience what they did. I would also like to say that I admire these young students' choice to exercise their right to free speech and stand up for what they believe to be important. But I also feel it necessary to address something that makes me uncomfortable with regards to the aftermath of this whole situation. There is one point that I think is essential when analyzing the rhetoric of the students affected by the recent shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High. Being a victim of a tragedy doesn't make you an expert on political policy. I understand that this is an unpopular opinion, and most people know this, but those whose views align with that of the students don't care, and here is why. They can use these kids as a political shield. The public views victims of tragedy as morally superior to everyone else, and they know that anyone who opposes the message of these students will come off as indifferent towards the suffering they have gone through. This allows them to shift the blame to whomever they choose. It is a dirty tactic being used to simultaneously put these anti-gun students on a pedestal and demean individuals and organizations such as the NRA, which really had nothing to do with the incident. MSD student Emma Gonzalez is the founder of the Never Again movement, along with her classmates Cameron Kasky and David Hogg. These three students have been given so much media attention over the past few weeks that their combined Twitter following has increased by over 2 million. Having watched each of them in various interviews and speeches, I found that they offer nothing new to the debate of gun control, apart from a fresh voice and a victim mentality. I am not saying that these kids are crisis actors, nor am I accusing them of having a false motive. However, they have been carrying themselves as competent and intelligent adults, and the media is treating them as such, so I have no issue doing the same. This being said, if we are critiquing these students the same as we would any political figure, it is obvious that some of these kids are bullies. They are bullies who ignore obvious information and attack others for no reason other than to further their immutable agenda. They're pathetic fuckers that want to keep killing our children. They could have blood from children spattered all over their faces and they wouldn't take action because they all still see those dollar signs. Here are some examples as to why I question the authenticity of these students' political knowledge. David Hogg referred to Governor Rick Scott as a child murderer for not doing enough about gun control. After Governor Rick Scott proposed a bill to make obtaining a firearm harder, Hogg continued to attack the governor on the basis that his efforts were poorly motivated, despite an earlier claim that any gun control legislation would be a success. He defended the officers who refused to engage the shooter, but at the same time stated that the failure on part of law enforcement is the fault of elected officials. He called anyone who questioned the official narrative disgusting. He said that politicians don't care about children's lives. He even challenged Alex Jones to a debate, presumably a bluff to Boldwell with his Twitter following. After Jones accepted, however, Hogg immediately backed out. He also bragged about hanging up the phone on a call from the White House, which is interesting because one might think that this intelligent student would use such a rare opportunity to learn about the president's plan for proposing gun legislation or increasing school safety. I actually hung up on the White House the other day. You hung up on the White House? Yeah. Cameron Kasky allegedly wrote a Facebook post publicly stating that he hopes everyone at the NRA shoots themselves. He also said he thinks it should be encouraged to punch people in the face if you don't agree with them politically. It's a miracle I don't punch the average Republican, he added. When referring to Second Amendment defenders, he said, They put it as if you're attacking a right they're born with. Yes, Cameron. That's kind of how it works. I mean this, I mean this sincerely, I, I really do. To all of the generations before us, we sincerely accept your apology. And we, we, we appreciate that you are willing to let us rebuild the world that you fucked up. The left is also calling out conservative incumbents, especially President Trump, to do something that would prevent another shooting from happening in the future. But ironically, Trump has actually been pulling for stricter gun control since the recent shooting. Nicole Russell put it best when she wrote that holding the NRA responsible for crime in which the shooter has told people he was going to kill students, where law enforcement had been called to his home more than 30 times, and the FBI was at least aware of, seems disingenuous at best and irresponsible at worst. This shows how little attention these March for Our Lives advocates have been paying to the facts that have arisen since the incident. They seem adamant that stricter gun legislation would have prevented the shooting from occurring. 
but haven't so much as acknowledged the following information. At least three armed deputies waited outside while 17 students were killed in the building. Sheriff Scott Israel said in a recent interview, quote, they should have gone in and addressed the killer. The school shooter had been reported to and visited by the police at least 19 times. The FBI was aware that the shooter made claims he wished to be a professional school shooter. The shooter had pulled the gun on and threatened his mother shortly before she died. A caller had tipped the FBI that the killer was going to shoot up the school prior to it actually happening. And the FBI and local police admitted fault in missing red flags that could have easily prevented the shooting from happening altogether. Based on these facts, I think it's ridiculously disingenuous and childish to put the blame on political incumbents and the NRA, which is exactly what these students are doing. As mentioned earlier, Hogg went so far as to defend the actions of a police officer that failed to engage the shooter as he killed 17 of his classmates. Now arises another question. Where are the student victims on the other side of the spectrum? They're out there on the same platform as these other students and actually offering sensible solutions to the divisive issue of gun control that no one seems to want to entertain. These kids are the victims of the same tragedy as the other ones, so why aren't their efforts met with the same praise? This is obviously the case only because they do not fit the narrative that most of the media has traditionally promoted. So if you're on Twitter, make sure to check out MST survivors Thomas Holgate and Kyle Kashev as they present rational solutions to an incredibly controversial problem. I hope to see some more debate style discourse between the students of MSC. This would be a great step in identifying the problem at hand and would hopefully open the eyes of students like Hogg and Kasky. So far, however, only the lesser known students have been open to the idea or even offered anything useful in regards to answering these difficult questions in a bipartisan manner. But for now, we need to treat these student activists as adults and continue to challenge them as we would any public figure because I believe that they are causing more political division rather than helping solve a national problem. Thank you all for watching. If you have any comments or concerns, feel free to leave a comment below. Otherwise, you can reach me on Twitter at 7ACYT.